Okay, at this point I want to drive home a basic concept that a cylindrical lens is just a specific type of toric lens. Um, and then remember, the third type of lens is a spherical lens. So with a spherical lens, the curvatures are the same. With a toric lens, you have two different curvatures that are at right angles to each other, and then you have other curvatures that are, you know, in between. So there's actually a kind of an infinite number of different curvatures with like the red being the steepest and the green being the flattest. And then what we have with the cylindrical lens is we have a curvature this way and it's totally straight this way. So on the red way we have power this way and on the green way we have axis this way. Okay, so that's a quick review of what we've gone over in the last couple of talks. So one concept I want you to kind of get your arms around is this idea that a cylindrical lens has a lot in common with a toric lens. And let's look at power crosses here. So let's draw three power crosses to describe these three lenses. Let's say the spherical lens is a plus three spherical lens. What that means is we have a power of plus three along its main axes, but also we have a power plus three everywhere in the lens. So anywhere we look in that lens, we have a power plus three. So if we were to find the average power for that lens, it would be plus three. Everywhere in the lens is plus three. So let's look at this um, cylindrical lens now way on the left. So what we have here is, let's say we have plus three axis 90. So the plus three is the direction of the red and the axis is the direction of the green. They're perpendicular to each other. So what we have now is we have no power axis 90 and we have plus three along the 180 and then halfway in between we have plus 150. Over here we have plus two. Over here we have plus one. So the lowest value anywhere on there is Plano. The highest value anywhere on there is plus three and everywhere else we have something in between. The average power if we were to find the power everywhere on the lens and then average it out, would be plus 150, which is half of the value of the maximum power. Maximum power is three, minimum power is zero, so the average power is gonna be plus 150. All right, so now let's look at the toric lens in the middle. So now what we have is, let's say we have um, power plus three this way and a power of plus two this way. Okay, so now what we have is our lowest power is plus two and our highest power is plus three. So what are we going to have halfway in between? We're going to have plus 250. What are we going to have a third of the way in between? Plus 275, plus 225, so the very, very lowest power we're going to have anywhere on the lens is plus two. The very, very highest power we're going to have anywhere on the lens is plus three. And in between, we're going to have something between two and three. And the average power in the lens, if we were to find the power everywhere on the lens and average it out, it would be plus 250, which is also the power halfway between plus two and plus three. So plus two is at 90, plus three is at 180, plus 250 would be halfway between 45 and 135 because it would also be here. Okay, so what we see is the toric lens has more in common with the cylindrical lens than it does with the spherical lens. And the reason for that is the cylindrical lens and the toric lens both have this concept where you have two different powers at, at 90 degrees to each other and everything else is in between. And kind of what we mentioned before is, if you look at these pictures here on the top, the red curve here and the red curve here are identical, okay? They both represent the same kind of power along this way. And then what you have is the green curve here is just a straight line, while the green curve here is just a little curvier than a straight line. So 
a cylindrical lens is the same as a toric lens. It's just instead of having just weak ability to bend light along the green axis here, there's just no ability to bend light along the green axis here. It's just a little bit weaker. So hopefully this concept just kind of adds, um, just adds a little depth to the discussion we've been having. Thanks.